Hello everyone, uh, my name's Matt Jones and I'm an artist for my sins. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about my experience of pattern and how that relates to thousands of years of human endeavour. What I'm saying may pose for further questions or you might need further discussion, please note down anything. Uh, well, there's times where I'm writing a paragraph and I can rant for two hours on the subject, so I can't get everything said in this. I see patterns everywhere. If I see a pattern, I have a sure and certain knowledge there's a code to describe it. Therefore, I see code everywhere. The first major hurdle as an artist working with code is to understand that nothing you're doing is that cutting edge or even really that modern. You belong to a long history of crafters, artisans and makers who have been working with code for long before the advent of a computer. Pattern is constant. Talk about relating curves to a stonemason and they'll understand it better than you. Talk about advanced crystallography to someone working with patchwork and they'll tell you things about how fives and sixes knit together. Talk to a mosaic artist uh, about pure sequential code and they'll understand fully what you're talking about. Process and craft have always required an understanding of order and with order comes sequence. A great part of my joy in art is looking at the world around me and spotting similar patterns from disparate sources. The patterns that, crack, that maze cracked riverbeds, extracting from them the places where the cracks intersect and comparing them to a starling murmuration, and from a starling murmuration to my favourite named academic paper, Geometry for the Selfish Herd, which uh, correctly determines how swarms move. Uh, and then into the pure mathematics of Voronoi, which is just so pretty. <laughs> I love it. In the curved tiling that clutch the archways of Isfahan in Iran, uh, I've forgotten the name of the mosque, forgive me, uh, and then comparing those to the mathematics of Roger Penrose, and this is 60s, noble winning crystallography. And if you look back, there are, at least on first glance, direct similarities. And I've found this great to make my own work to explore, educate, and create work around. <coughs> in looking for patterns, always seek the smallest unit. Uh, the tessera that form a tessellation, a jigsaw piece, uh, a numerical value. Once you've outlined the simplest unit, even the most complex construction is blissfully simple. Fair warning, <laughs> once you start doing this, it never stops. Counting, <laughs> counting bricks as you're walking, counting crows in the sky. Uh, this is my life and it never ends. <laughs> and you can hear my friends laughing at me. <laughs> um, okay. In devoting myself wholly to the study of pattern, I found there are two distinct threads in how this, uh, this, how this appears in my artwork. You have the simple, you have the complex. Both of these serve different, different purposes. First off, the simple and logical. This is Hilbert's curve. Hilbert's curve was um, referred to as a Victorian monster. It was discovered in about 1890. And it was written in the back of mathematics books and just saying, oh, isn't this interesting? And it was only until 1950 in the work of Benoit Mandelbrot that people looked at these patterns and went, oh, the fractals. And I was looking for something that in the language of a fractal, which is that scale changes, but the shape stays the same. And I needed a simple version to show this. And this is what Hilbert's curve is about. Jonathan Swift, author of Gulliver's Travels, used to read his satire to his servants so that the message wasn't missed. And I really wanted something that conveyed everything that was beautiful about fractal geometry, this idea that the, you know, the size changes, the scale, the actual object stays the same. And this was the best example I could find for it. And I also loved that the, everyone had missed it until the 50s. It's just my proper, proper knowledge. Okay. Secondly, the complex and arcane. And this was um, a project called Mind Out. Um, I developed a robotic drawing system with the help of some incredibly talented friends. But that wasn't really the point of it. The point was... <laughs> A slew of artists describing their work as eco-art, and I just didn't 
quite kind of engage what that meant. It doesn't, for me, mean drawing a penguin, because um, that doesn't really convey everything. You're using horrendous spray paint. Yeah, with CFC. It just didn't make any sense to me. So I was trying to work out what eco art was. And for me, it was efficiency. It was conveying the piece of artwork, doing it as simply as I can. So with this, with the drawing system, I was able to come up with something which had the correct level of efficiency, was simplistic, used the minimal amount of materials. That was only half of it, however. Uh, my initial interest in the pattern came from how much it looked like natural geometry. It reminded me of lichens, of mycelium, of mushrooms, of fungus, um, of brains themselves, of the actual uh, architecture of the brain. What I found through, this, through my work is that if you find a pattern, it looks beautiful. There's every chance that the mathematics behind it is also beautiful. The intention and actualization of such complex pattern work is distinctly different from the simplistic. The simple describes a process, while the convoluted dumps the audience in amongst the patterns to experience it. Uh, in a similar way to how mosque and cathedral architecture is designed to inspire awe, in the correct sense of the word, awe through complexity. Awesome. The incorporation of a robotic drawing system was an attempt at efficiency. I've got to admit now, it wasn't entirely successful. I spent two weeks living in the install. I slept quite often in the middle of it, uh, watching the bot crawl at the wall. Yeah, like I said, not entirely the most efficient. I'm sure the next iteration would be a lot better, but as it was, I didn't quite accomplish the efficiency. But the main point of using this robotic drawing system was to, kind of, was to get across the idea that if I'd drawn something of this size entirely by hand, and I have done 15-foot walls where I've just drawn a single line, it was, it was generative, but then I took it back and drew it by hand. And I just knew how many errors would creep into something this size, which is a 16-foot open-ended cube. And I wasn't going to be comfortable with the amount of errors that would include. So the, the robotic drawing system did accomplish that, but perhaps not in the most efficient way. Technology allows access to realms of thought, practice and product that haven't been truly available to us before this point. It is our duty to embrace it as makers, not to remove skills, but to complement them. My artistic process is about d developing and outlining both rigid order and boiling chaos, and then finding the middle point between the two. The errors, in this case, are important. This is a quote from the British poet Peter Redgrove. It is said that the Islamic carpet makers left mistakes in their work so that God would not become jealous. That, in fact, is not the case. The mistakes are where God gets in. Though it's not deliberate, I've now spent the last two years with uh, significant and complex problems to my eyes, which has ended up with the visual world of art becoming distorted and blurred to me, and my experience of the world has changed as well. And in terms of the work which I'm going to produce next, I can already feel that it's going to incorporate this, a world where sight is less important, but perception is everything. In conclusion... The last thing I want you to do is leave here and copy my work and practice. <coughs> Take my word for it. Some of the things I've done, I've done the most long and tortuous way you could do anything, and I really would not recommend it to anyone else. What I do want you to take is some, some part of the attitude which I look at the world in. It's there to be ripped apart for information, ripped apart for data, and then be reassembled to inform an old truth or to create a, a new one. These are interesting times. Thank you.